Hey, in this series, we're using Chainlink functions to bring weather data into our smart contract. If you haven't been following along, there's a link to the full playlist in the description below. All right, so we have covered a lot of ground in this series of videos. We've talked about what we're gonna build. We've gotten funds from the faucet. We've created our functions JavaScript code that will be run in those sandboxed environments. We've created our function subscription. We've deployed our smart contract and we've added it as a consumer to our function subscription. So in this video, we're gonna use that deployed contract to actually make a call and bring that weather data on chain. All right, so here we have our smart contract that we deployed in the previous video. If we check the temperature, we can see it's zero degrees Fahrenheit. So how do we actually make a call to functions? Well, there's this send request function in our smart contract. We talked about this in the previous video, and this is what actually creates that function call. So we'll need to use that request. So we click here, we need our subscription ID. So if we look at our function subscription, we can find our subscription ID right here. It's also in the URL. In my case, it's 2039. Yours is gonna be different. So our subscription ID is 2039. And then we have an array of strings that we can pass in for our arguments. The first time I go through this, I wanna just pass in an empty array just to see what happens. So we'll click transact and we'll confirm our transaction. All right, our transaction's confirmed. Let's go take a look at the function's UI and see what's changed. So now underneath consumers, I have this pending area. This is our request. So this is a request from our smart contract going to functions. And what we're doing now is we're waiting for the functions network that distributed Oracle network, we're waiting for that to come back with a response after it makes that API call. And this does take a little bit of time sometimes because they have to go and make that API call, reach consensus, and bring that information back to our smart contract. All right, so the page is refreshed and we can see now the pending is gone and we have this history. This shows us all of the function calls that have happened. In this case, we see here in the status column, a computation and the callback, they both have a green check mark by them. If something went wrong, they'd have a red X. If you were to click on these, they'd give you a little bit more information. So let's head back to Remix and see what has happened to our temperature. So now if we check the temperature, we can see it's changed to 74. And this is consistent with what we saw in the playground in the previous video. So that's pretty cool, right? We've got a basic weather functionality set up and ready to go. All right, so now if we wanted to pass in a latitude and longitude, how do we do that? Well, in our args here, it's expecting an array of strings. So we'll pass in two values here, similar to what we did in the previous video. And we'll click transact. We'll confirm our transaction. And we can see that transaction is confirmed. So let's head back to the functions UI. And here we can see we once again have a pending transaction. All right, our transaction has completed. If we head back to our contract and we take a look at temp now, we can see it changes. It's similar, but it's 73. So this new location that we passed in, the temperature is 73 degrees Fahrenheit. And just like that, we've used Chainlink functions to bring off-chain non-deterministic data into our smart contract. This is a simple example. I'll give you that. But I think it shows the power that you can unlock with Chainlink functions. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.